So, Alan, we've been unfortunate and um, we've got into a spot of trouble and we've reached the point where we've had to press the distress button on our radio yep. to call for help. We've pressed the button and sent the distress message. What happens next? Okay, the first thing that we'll get is um, this is our DSC screen. Um, all of these red lines uh, distresses that have been received on one of our aerial sites. Uh, it sets off an alarm in the ops room. So the first thing that we would do is silence the alarm and, in, and look at the information that we've got. Um, what we're looking for is where the vessel is um, to find out whether it's within our area or whether it's um, Portland or Dover or with the French. Um, while this is happening, you're obviously sitting there waiting for the acknowledgement to be received uh, and it generally takes us uh, sort of 15-20 seconds just to go through, make sure that everything's right, have a look at what it is and for the Channel 16 operator to prepare themselves to receive the comms. At that point, if it is within our area, we then acknowledge it, so you get an alarm back on yours which tells you that the Coast Guard's acknowledged it and it will tell you that it's us from our MMSI number. At that point would be the time that you switch to Channel 16 and start your Mayday communications um, following either your checklist or whatever means you use to broadcast your, your Mayday. Excellent. So from then onwards you would coordinate whatever resources that's right we we gain the information from your mayday relay broadcast or sorry your mayday broadcast um, if unfortunately something catastrophic happened between you transmitting that dsc distress and us acknowledging it and then waiting for your comms if we didn't hear the comms then we would try contacting you uh, if we got no response then because we know who you are from your MMSI number, uh, if it's already one that's logged in our DSC database and it tells us who you are, if not we've got other databases as in, of course your CG66 would help us with that uh, and then we would be able to start search and rescue action based on the position that you provided within the DSC call. Excellent. Um, say for instance you had someone on your vessel either accidentally or deliberately set off the DSC button to call for help um, and it wasn't appropriate, it wasn't needed. Okay. Say a child set it off. Yep. What, what, what should you do? Okay, the first thing is please do call us either by the radio or on the telephone um, and tell us that you've ac tell us who you are, tell us that you've accidentally set off your, your DSC. We would more than likely already have that DSC in front of us and so we could then broadcast a message to everyone else who'd received that not forgetting that it's not just the Coast Guard that receive it but it's anyone with a DSC that's switched on so we could inform them via a broadcast on Channel 16 that it had been inadvertently set off and you weren't in distress because if you don't contact us then we need to go back to that something catastrophic may have happened between you sending it and us expecting you to call and so, just, so we'd have to treat it as a real distress. So if you just turned the, turned the radio off and thought oh I hope I don't get into trouble for that the next thing you probably know is a helicopter arriving or something. That's right yeah, yeah. The, the problem being is if you do think that we won't catch up with you we have got information on who you are where you and are where you are yeah and we need to treat that as a distress until you tell us that you've accidentally set it off. We have no problem with you telling us that you've accidentally done it, but we would please ask that you do call us if it's an accident and own up to it, rather than us tasking search and rescue resources that um, could be used elsewhere. You could be pulling them away from another real distress and that we've got to prioritise with them. Thank you, Alan. How would you go about testing whether or not your DSC distress works on a radio. Say, say you bought the radio, it's all installed, how do you actually know it works? 
Okay. But the first thing on this is really to have a look at the manual and make yourself familiar with how your particular DSC set works. Um, please don't send a distress to test it because that not only goes to us, it goes to everyone and it's very much like you're accidentally setting it off. Um, the implications are far worse than knowing that it works. Uh, depending on the radio set that you've got, it may, if it's a more modern one, have a facility that allows you to send a test transmission with the DSC and that would be somewhere within the menus. They are semi-automatic so all it involves us doing is clicking one button and that responds to you and then you get a message up on there telling you that it's been acknowledged and all's okay. The other way of doing it is contact us um, via VHF first and just say that you'd like to carry out a routine DSC and then send a routine individual DSC to Solent Coast Guard um, and then we can acknowledge that and that obviously shows that the system works. Or alternatively if you don't want to use us, if you've got another friend with another boat who's got a DSC and you know their MMSI number then you can send them an individual so Just asking for a position request, so t typically if you're you're using your DSC to change channel or communicate with your friends that's enough to prove that that part of the system works and yeah, the button right. the button is just using the same yeah. underlying yeah it really is a case though of being sort of familiar with how the system works knowing what the different menus do and knowing the different facilities that are available to you because every radio set unfortunately is very slightly different to the next one and so uh, there's no general way of testing it. Excellent. Thank you, Alan.